I'm going to find the Fourier coefficients for the functions f of t shown here. It's just f of t equals t for t between 0 and 1 and then repeating itself with period 1. Since the period is 1 that means the angular frequency is 2 pi over 1 which is 2 pi. I've drawn the graph of this function also. What can we say about this graph? Well, nothing very interesting really. It does not reflect in the vertical axis, so it is not an even function. Nor can we rotate it into itself by rotating about the origin, so it's also not an odd function. In principle we might expect this f of t to have all the a's and all the b's amongst its Fourier coefficients. I urge you to do the standard calculation for this f. It turns out you will discover that in fact most of the a's are zero. There must be a good reason for that. Let's see if we can find it. If we can find that reason then that will also allow us to do the Fourier series with a far less work because we won't have to calculate those a's. Well, all the a's being zero, does that maybe suggest that this function is not all it seems? Perhaps it does have some kind of odd nature about it. I'm going to look at a slightly different function that I'll call g. I'm defining g to be f of t minus a half. Here it is. At the end of this work we will need to go back to f, so I'd also like to write f of t equals g of t plus a half. Why is this g any better than the f we started with? Well, let's draw a graph. It's just a vertical shift on f, isn't it? Down by a half. Look at what happens. Can you see the magic? The shifting down has created a function which is now odd. If you take this function and swivel it by 180 degrees about the origin, it will rotate into itself. That means that for this function, g of t, all of the a's are zero. We don't have to calculate them. That's two out of the three integrals we have to do, dismissed. And since each one would involve integration by parts, that's really quite a saving. There is a small price to pay. In order to get the b's, which we will now do, we need to adjust the formula for g. But g is just f minus a half, so the basic unit between naught and 1 is really just g equals t minus a half. Yeah, because can you remember without actually scrolling back, between naught and 1 f of t was just t. There'll still be integration by parts to do, but now only 1. So let's get on and do it for the b's. The integral is 2 over the period, the period is 1, then the integral over a period, that's 0 to 1, the formula for g, which was t minus a half, and sine n omega t. And remember that omega was 2 pi. So here's the integral we have to do. You can do this integral by parts, but I'm just going to write down the answer. It looks like this. I'll leave you to check it. Now one part of this disappears immediately. Can you see which part? It's the second part because when we put t equals either 1 or 0 into that sine we get respectively sine 2n pi and sine 0. Those are both 0. So we can cross that term out. In the other term we can also cancel some 2's. But then we have to do the hard work and put the limits in. Here I'm taking pity on you and breaking it down into simple stages. First with 1 and then subtract and substitute 0. But cos of 0 and cos of 2n pi for whole n are both 1. And the parts in brackets simplify respectively to a half and negative a half. So overall the answer comes to minus 1 over n pi. Those are the bn's remember. So let's write down our Fourier series for g. It's just this series here. But now Remember we were interested in f. f is related to g. Here, remember this formula? f is just g plus a half. So all we've got to do is go back to our Fourier series for g and add the constant one half on. And hey presto, here's the Fourier series for f.
If you've tried to find this Fourier series the longer way by starting with f, I hope you'll agree that this method here has cut quite a lot of work out. Let's just think about this result for a minute. If you had found the Fourier series for f in the normal way, you would have found the same bn's as I have here. After all, it's the same sign terms for f and g. The difference is you would have had to plough through the work to find the an's and you would have found all of them zero except for a0. a0 remembers the constant term. That must be the one that gives us the half. Of course it's a0 over 2 in the Fourier series. So if you actually work out a0 for f you'd be expecting to find a0 equals 1. I urge you if you haven't already done it to at least do that much. Find the a0 for the function f and convince yourself that it is 1 and so that half of it is a half. So now you know about this method, you can, if you wish, try to use it on any Fourier series where you can see a vertical or indeed even a horizontal shift sometimes that makes the function look more symmetric. I urge you to think about these things before diving in and doing long calculations.